one of the, one of the absolute unbelievable blessings of my life has been that Kelly has figured out the tools are good. Yeah. She and not because I mean she likes them. And not only has she figured out that tools are good, but she's figured out the tools make me more productive. And so my wife has her eye out for tools uh, to my benefit all the time. Welcome to another episode of the Essential Craftsman Podcast. I'm Nate. I've got my dad here, the Essential Craftsman. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Hi, guys. You want to tell everybody what you've been doing this morning, just as a interesting tidbit before we dig in? Yeah. So the last part of last week, and it's a, probably a s- story that is almost worth telling completely, but we'll just cut to the chase and say that Kelly and I jumped in the truck with the trailer and went down to Vacaville, California about, I don't know what it is. It's quite a way south. It's between Sacramento and San Francisco on a mission to get a platen table, a platen table or an acorn table. You metal workers know what that is. And there's a fellow down there that had one. And he said I could have it if I would drive down there and load it up. So I did that and got it home and and uh, I loaded it with jacks and cribbing and backed the trailer under it and got home and it was heavy, like 5,000 pounds. And so this morning I've been preparing to slide it out of the trailer. It's a dump trailer. So I've been kind of setting up a system where I can just elevate that trailer and gradually slide that table out onto the ground so I outside of the shop Mm -hmm. so I can sandblast it, paint it, and then move it in in the right spot. Uh, These acorn tables are pretty neat and and they're super useful, but it seems like they're also a pretty serious, uh, not necessarily a status item, but (laughs) if a shop has one, it's kind of like, whoa, that's a big, it's a big statement in any shop, right? Yeah, baby. If you've got, if you've got an acorn table, and an anvil in your shop. I mean, you have arrived, right? Yeah, yeah, that's great. All right. Well, well I've got to say, my daughter-in-laws are rolling their eyes so hard. <laughs> you know, there's real danger of vision damage for some of those girls. I think. <laughs> well, what do they know about mm-hmm. fabricating? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, what we're going to talk about today is tools, and we're going to start the conversation from the point of view of a. I don't really love the term DIY. That sounds way too just kind of crafty and like paint oriented right, right but maybe homeowner is a better mm-hmm. orientation and, and and we're speaking about tools the sequence of purchasing tools and building a toolkit or a toolbox um with with for a person who's not necessarily in the trades making a living off of them and and you know i can't help but spill over and to the perspective of yeah you are making a living and yeah they've got to be pro quality so we'll i'll try to ratchet that back and think from a little different perspective and Nate and I are coming at this from two slightly different angles. So maybe we'll be Mm -hmm. coherent here. Um, before we talk specifically about tools as a point of reference from where I'm coming from, I love buying anything that I know I'm going to keep for decades and maybe it'll be lost or break or something, but I just, I love anytime I'm kind of getting ready for a purchase of some item that I know there's a chance I'll own that same item when I die. So tools, um, guns, not clothing, luggage, luggage, maybe certain, certain furniture items or, you know, tables like, like the acorn table, you know, like you're, you're, you're never going to have to buy or shop for an acorn table again. And tools are right there. Even some of the lowly hand tools, you know, um, wire strippers, you know, it's, it's fun to buy a a pair. I bought, I remember buying a pair of wire strippers when I was probably 26 and I bought the nice Klein ones. Mm -hmm. They're $28. I remember it was a ton. And I just remember kind of being so happy that I never had to buy wire strippers again. And Mm -hmm. sure enough, I still have those Mm -hmm. and I'm glad I bought that nice pair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is that. And then the, the, the offsetting dynamic of that is when you've just got to have something and you know, you're only going to use it once and you will probably lose it before you ever use it again. I guess I'm speaking from my position of uh, chaos in the shop. Sometimes there are times when you grab something off the shelf, the first thing you come to and you're to the checkout and you're out the door and you're to the job and you use it and you put it in the box and maybe you see it again and maybe you don't. And it was like the sixth time you bought that's that. That's right. That's right. It falls in line with the other 12 caulking guns that yeah. you bought each. Or staplers. Yeah. Or I have. Staplers. I think I have six identical staplers like in my container in Arizona. Yeah. Um, so what, what would you say if someone was a young homeowner, uh, type of guy looking to build out a toolkit and we'll talk about 
maybe top five tools that that everybody needs to have, what, what would you kind of start with for a person um, in, in those shoes? Okay, so the first baseline thing that has been driven home for me is when you have to buy a tool, you buy the very best tool you can possibly afford. And I can remember in days past when the best tool I could possibly afford was the cheapest tool that was available um, anywhere. That was the best tool I could possibly afford, so that's what I bought. But So that may be where you're at, and there is no shame in that, especially in an era of Craigslist, right, where if you are willing and learn to shop Craigslist, or for that matter, secondhand stores, you can buy a top quality tool for a price that you can afford because it's used. Yeah. So the used tool option is is an incredible value, and I highly recommend that. Let, and, let me jump in. For homeowners, that's especially uh, useful because used tools are often older. Older tools are often heavier or previous generation, but heavier tools for a homeowner is not that big of a deal. That's when right. When you only use it a few times a month or something, that's right. those extra eight or 10 ounces or whatever that's right. do not matter. And that's the skill saw that I bought. You actually were with me mm -hmm. um, in Arizona from that's a pawn right. shop was the, the, the Battleship Gray steel, um, skill saw. It was $75. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot heavier than what was available in 2008 or whenever that mm -hmm, was. Mm -hmm. But it didn't, it, I really, it does not matter Doesn't at all. Matter. So for homeowners, yeah. old, buying older used tools, mm -hmm. pro quality is just, I don't know how you can beat that value. You can't beat it. And in general, a heavier tool is harder to break. Yeah. Right? So, so having said that, buy the very best tool you can possibly afford and, and just be honest about what you can possibly afford. After that, to the question that you were asking, I think one of the first things you've got to buy nowadays is some sort of a drill driver cordless set. Yeah. Um, you've got to have them. If you can only do one, then you buy the drill. But if you can, if you can do both, you buy a, a cordless drill and impact driver. And with that, there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Yeah, and I, I think you basically have to buy both of them mm -hmm. because it's like a hundred and forty dollars for one and right. two hundred dollars for right. both and on craigslist you'll find a deal on one for 75 bucks yeah you know i don't know actually about battery operated tools and i was just talking about used and previous generation tools i don't i don't know if that applies with battery powered kind of items because the batteries are very often the most valuable part of yep. the tool yeah and used batteries they wear out those are consumables yeah and that's so that's true and so That's with true. the drill impact combo, I got to say, uh, ignore my last <laughs> point and just buy a new one, spend a little more, and um, then you get new batteries. That'll yeah. last you the so, longest. Yeah, or they might, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's that, but that is kind of assuming that you've already got a, a socket set, right? You got to have probably, probably start with a 3 8 drive socket set, but yeah. when you get it, it would be nice if it had SAE and metric. So... You, you got to have that if you've got a car. If you don't have a car, maybe you don't have to have that. But yeah. if you don't want to have to pay everybody to do everything, you got to have a socket set. Yeah. So the basics here, maybe what we're building around are like the, the 10 or 5 must-have. So a drill slash impact mm -hmm. setup, cordless, mm -hmm. um, a socket set that's mm -hmm. as fully developed as you can afford as many yep. pieces and fittings and everything but you, you and, have and if to. you watch sales i mean costco sometimes will have a really yeah. pretty good is cobalt what they say i don't know that's lowe's that's Co lowe's costco just, whatever whatever costco's selling they're selling whatever mm -hmm. they got a big bulk purchase on that's pretty darn good and they'll have a ginormous set like craftsmen used to have yeah. for a ridiculously low price for halfway decent quality and and that's that's not bad yeah, costco's know. tough though because pretty much every mechanic tool set manufacturer or brand these days has a lifetime warranty mm -hmm. and and i'm sure costco's does as well but they don't have those tools on the shelf every day of the year true you and don't, so you if your it. ratchet breaks which mine do all the time uh, it's a lot tougher to replace that at a costco than if you were to buy it at home depot or lowe's or um that's a good point a hardware store or used to i guess it used to be sears who's carried yeah. craftsman that's yeah. lowe's now lowe's has it now but all of those brands i've i think in terms of mechanics tools are really good <laughs> all they've got to do is work yeah that's all they've got to do is work. i always wondered about like snap-on which 
is so expensive and advertises this also lifetime warranty, like a, a lifetime warranty of a brand that's been around for a long time and will be like, it seems like that negates the quality aspect of that tool. Does that make Maybe, sense? Maybe, but I tell you what, Snap-on is elegantly designed. Yeah. The fit. So, I mean, that's the reason some people buy, well, you know, aesthetic. There yeah. is an aesthetic component to a tool once you get to where you can afford it. And Snap-on is a very sexy wrench. I guess if you're holding it and using it every day, yeah. then you would enjoy and the extra cost would get spread out over days and years. Yeah, and it's, it's part it. of the ambiance of a pro shop, right? Yeah. Or it can be. Yeah. So so we gotta you gotta have some sort of a mechanics tool set of some size or another, and there's no yeah. limit to how much you might how, want. However much you want to spend. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Um so drill driver, yes. You gotta be able to cut wood. Every homeowner, every pro's gotta be able to cut wood. Yeah. Um and I don't know why you would start with anything but a skill saw. Yeah. Now, wait, rewind the tape. Let's say you've just bought a cordless drill driver set. You've committed yourself to some product line. Yeah. You might be able to just buy the skill, the cordless skill saw that'll accept those batteries for less money than almost anything else. Mm -hmm. Drop those batteries into that skill saw platform and be good enough. Yeah. That's a judgment call. It, it has seemed to me, but that our audience would understand why that a plug-in worm drive saw is the only way to go. It's the tool. And so that's what I have done, but maybe it's a matter of, you could definitely get into a skill saw for the least amount of money with a used worm drive for and sure. have the absolute best bang for your buck. That's right. That's but right. if you want to have the portability or the cordless aspect, then that's the, not a bad way to go. The, the only reason it would make sense is if you could get the same platform and you've already got the batteries yeah. and the other tools, mm -hmm. and then sometimes you can just buy the saw for... 40 or 50 bucks or 30 bucks or 60 yeah. bucks and then drop the batteries in and be yeah. in business. But in general, I, I like a skill saw. But these cordless saws, you know, you have that one now from skill and we use the Makita one. They, the real ones, like the seven inch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. blades are, they're pretty serious tools. They're a very serious tool. And they take the biggest batteries. The Makita takes the biggest batteries and two of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know. It just still seems like a corded saw for a homeowner is hard to beat. Hard to beat. Yeah. And I don't think it matters that much what brand. And even the right, the sidewinder is great for, yeah. for homeowner use, That's right? That's right. All you've got to be, be able to do is cut the board. Yeah. You know. And I would say you still also need a handsaw because there's a lot of like stuff that a handsaw can do. It, handsaws are hard to sharpen, okay? And there's a whole, there's a whole sort of, um, what would you say, hobby or a whole a whole help me out it's disorder a, yeah disorder around hand yeah. saws you know collecting hand saws kind of like axes yeah right but you can't sharpen most people aren't equipped to sharpen a hand saw but you can buy little kind of throwaway hand saws now that are razor sharp or a japanese pull saw mm -hmm. which has a lot of applications it's nice to have one of those around now the times you're going to need it are going to be small. And if you go ahead and add a Sawzall, which yeah. is one of the other things we'll talk about, to your toolkit, you may never pick up a handsaw. But it's not the wrong thing to have yeah. one if you but pick for, it up. For $10, a, a new, short, mm -hmm. sharp handsaw can really help. I mean, cutting like one piece of PVC pipe. Yeah. You know, you don't have to like dig out and plug in your skill saw and all That's that. True. It's Is there, again, bang for the buck, you, you kind of have to have one. Yep. And there's some cuts, like with a skill saw, where you want you you say you're cutting out a rafter or whatever yeah, to finish it, and in, you want an inside do a, corner. Yeah, you mm -hmm. want to do a good looking job. Mm -hmm. You got to have a handsaw. Yeah. So and it's, if it's we're back, there. if we're back to do it yourself, you probably don't have to have a sawzall. You probably don't have to. Yeah. Now it, just so here's the other thing: you make the list of the tools that you want, and make sure that your bride and your brother-in-law and your folks know the tools that are on your list. Yeah. And. I mean, it's a benefit to them and it's a benefit to you. And if you do commit yourself to a cordless platform, make sure they know because there's nothing worse than mm -hmm. committing yourself to a nice pro quality cordless or on the other hand, maybe Ryobi, which punches above its weight. Yeah. And then somebody comes in with another platform. That's no good. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So uh, a saw, a, a skill saw, a cordless set, mechanics, tools, what would be next on the list for a person building out their kit? Here's a little thing. You need to have some nail sets, punches, 
okay? Mm. You need to have two or three, and they live somewhere, and you lose them. But everybody sometimes needs a punch or a little drift, you know, to start into a hole. Or, or there's just a million things you can do with a little set of punches that, that you ought to be able to do, and they don't, like I say, you can pick them up at secondhand stores. They'll be laying in a bin, and you can get them for almost nothing. Or you buy a little set off the shelf for, you know, six or eight bucks or 12 bucks or whatever they are. Mm-hmm. You ought to have those. Yeah, yeah, good call. Um, we didn't mention hammer yet, but I would say like a pretty solid S-wing hammer is... Can't beat it. You can't go wrong. It won't break or wear out. And if you're lucky, you'll own it, you know, when you're a great, great grandpa also. Yeah. And you're probably not geared up to put a handle in a wood a wood handle in a hammer. So we're not even talking about the vast range of wood handled hammers. And it's which a pain because you do that. And after like six or seven years of, it'll just dry out and be <laughs> loose anyway. So yeah, it, it, it can. When you don't use them a lot, you yeah. know, I guess if it's outside or something. Yeah. So an S-wing hammer, and then the other tool that just seems like a, a match set to me with an S-wing hammer is those little blue Vaughn Wonder Bar pry bars. Yeah, little those little bar. flat bars, yeah, door bar Wonder Bar. Yeah, pry that's bar. another tool that just seems like you can find even as like a scraper or yeah. like to dig a certain hole or clean out the bottom of a hole in a yep. certain way. Any they, number of things, you know, scra- yeah. scrape the caulking off the back of a, a yeah. sink that you have to replace. So then it opens up the whole nightmare of plumbing. I almost don't even know what to tell you about plumbing, except you've got to have a pair of slip joint pliers of some kind, yeah. good ones. Nipex, yeah. wow, Nipex. Yeah, that's the way to go. The Nipex fact, Cobra. Yeah, in fact, no matter, even if you hire, even if, even if your brother's a plumber, you need to have a set of Nipex Cobra pliers yeah. in your toolbox. Or maybe it's alligator. I can't remember. Whatever. Maybe, maybe that's two different models, but can't go wrong. Those are the channel locks to buy, and separate from plumbing, just mm-hmm. for holding on to nuts and bolts and hot things and any whatever. number of things they, they will save you yeah um plumbing plumbing crescent ranch i mean a, a swedish nut lathe right yeah. you gotta have one yeah. of those Pro- probably uh, let's just step out on a limb and say 10 inch now s- sometimes you're gonna wish it 12 sometimes you're gonna wish it's a six or an eight but 10 inch is a pretty good length on a crescent ranch if you gotta if you gotta pick a size yeah i i, I think at this point honestly at this point, at least the way it worked for me, speaking as the person who has been the homeowner angle and acquiring tools, it kind of it starts to become whatever job you're up against will require a tool. I flipped my the first house I flipped I did without a sawzall, and there was a lot of times where I wished I had a sawzall. I did all the demo and a lot of the work uh, myself, and I didn't have a sawzall, and and I got the job done. But that was at that time the next tool in line that made sense. And, you know, you're talking about plumbing. If, if a plumbing job is the next one you're taking on over the weekend, or maybe if it's an electric job, then you're going to be looking at some of the electrical hand tools Mm -hmm. and wire testers and all that. But I, maybe we've covered it. Maybe those kind of five items are the building blocks and the, 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 the the tools that spread across most of the trades. And then it's so hard though. It's like you're going on a major camping trip. Yeah. What are you going to need? Well, everything. I need, I need everything. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to have a good time, I need it all. You got to have a utility knife. Yeah. Or you got a Leatherman in your pocket. You can live with that. No, a, a, a utility knife. You got to have a utility knife. Yeah. You know. And, well, the other one that was, I remember buying this and being bummed, kind of like, oh, I never thought I, but anyways, a nice extension cord. Got to have the right Because cord. you can only string together those little 16 gauge Christmas light cords. <laughs> <laughs> so, so long far. until it's like okay i gotta get my saw out to yeah. wherever but if you're if you're you're a do-it-yourself it doesn't have to be a hundred footer you don't have to no, buy a hundred foot a, cord buy a 50 foot 12 gauge cord with, or, or 225s not bad yeah or 225s but 12 gauge and you don't need 100 feet that's yeah, right yeah yeah that's right all right so, so there's no end to this rabbit hole yeah and there shouldn't be um so here's the other thing is always be setting aside a little money for a tool even if you're not a pro, just have some sort of little slush fund, and I don't care how you fund it, but fund it somehow and have a little bit of money building up for tools all the well, time. It matters a little bit how you fund it, but I get well, your I, point. Well, okay, there would be some ways you wouldn't want to fund this, <laughs> but uh, but boy, it's nice to have some sort of an idea that you don't have to be taking food off your kid's plate to yeah. buy the tool that you think you need, you know, because you do need it. Yeah, yeah, and... And like to circle back, 
buying tools used, you know, at pawn mm. shops or on Craigslist is so powerful because very often they don't wear out. They're just as useful after they've lost the shine and the the polish mm -hmm. and you can just save so much money. It's almost it's the it's a bummer when I have to buy a tool at Home Depot or Lowe's because I need it right that second mm -hmm. and I just know I'm paying twice what I, you know, might have mm -hmm. to. And I know there's some tools, little hand tools that it doesn't make sense to chase down use. Mm -hmm. But it's still a bummer to have to just buy a big tool cuz you need it right then. Yeah. So so plan it out. So um well, one thing. One of the one of the absolute unbelievable blessings of my life has been that Kelly has figured out the tools are good. Yeah. She and not because I mean she likes them. And not only has she figured out that tools are good, but she's figured out that tools make me more productive. And so my wife has her eye out for tools uh, to my benefit all the time. Yeah. And I never get any pushback. I've never gotten any pushback on tools. If it's a tool and I need it, she is as fully on board as I am. Yeah. Now, I don't know what percentage of the husbands out there have that gift in their life, but it has enabled us to progress in certain areas and take on certain jobs and satisfy the needs that people have in a way that nothing else would have. Mm -hmm. it, it has, it has broadened our, our sphere of influence and our capacity as a couple. Yeah. And uh, for me as a contractor, because my wife was so on board with that, she has found on Craigslist, several of my biggest tool purchases. I'm yeah. thinking of the towable compressor that I run my power hammer with. She found that, Hey, were you looking for some kind of a, yeah, I was here. Wow, that was it. Wow. That, my radial drill. Hey, were yeah. you looking at for some kind of a big drill? And she's on Craigslist surfing the tools. Yeah, man, there it was. It was 80 miles from where I live, and it was mm. absolutely the one on the planet that would fit best. Mm. And so she's been such an asset in so many ways, and that for one. Um, this conversation is completely different for professionals like yourself mm. where – buying a tool or acquiring a tool is not so much a, a luxury or a fun kind of new collectible right. item, but it buys you time and money and just yeah. completely allows you to leapfrog, you know, yeah. days and hours of, of labor. So this, this conversation would be totally different for the pros. It's basically yeah. buy yeah. as many tools that could help at the first time you possibly need it yeah. and yeah. something like that. And making the calculation, do I buy this or rent it? And does it yeah. pay me to own it or should I rent it? And the other bonus for me buying all these tools is it is going to vastly complicate my kid's life when I die. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be such a year, years. It'll take them years to distribute that rust. And that makes me smile. Yeah. That's, that's going to be really fun. Looking forward to that. <laughs> Um, let's, uh, kind of finish this conversation by talking about Harbor Freight. Do you want to oh, yeah. kind of air out your, any of your feelings, good or bad on yeah. Harbor Freight tools? So, man, those people have sold a lot of junk over the years, right? And they've solved a lot of problems over the years. And so it gets back to the initial thing. You buy the best tool you can possibly afford. And sometimes that means you shop at Harbor Freight every single time. And sometimes it means that you put a mask over your face and go into Harbor Freight because you're afraid somebody will see you go in there to buy something. <laughs> but when I was just down in California last week loading up that acorn table, mm -hmm. okay, 5,000 pounds, I had an assortment of hydraulic jacks with I-beams and cribbing, and I was ready to jack that thing up one sixteenth of an inch per stroke. And the fellow that gave it to me was a retired millwright, Pete, and he said, hey, I've got these two air... 20 ton air over hydraulic jacks, brand new. One had never been plugged in and the other had once and he got them at Harbor Freight and they were like perfect, hmm. perfect. Now I am on board with Buy American. Let me just throw that down. I am on board with Buy Made in the USA. But our conversation right here is about equipping the toolbox you got to have to make your way in the world. And sometimes you have to go to Harbor Freight and walk out of there with what you need but not every time. So they have a niche, they fill a purpose, they solve yeah. problems and they're, they're vulnerable to criticism and they're vulnerable. They, they have sometimes earned praise. And so, I mean, don't, don't be a, sno a tool snob if you can help it. Right. I, I could be wrong, but I think that Harbor Freight is working on improving the quality of their tools yeah. and getting past their reputation as terrible and getting 
and putting out more serious tools. And and, yeah. and I think they're well into that. I think there's new lines there that are pretty good. I, I, I would, for for my conscience, I would really like it to see a lot of stuff in there from Taiwan. Okay, mm. I would like that better. Mm-hmm. And I could I could endorse them without reservation with that sort of a thing. Yeah. But um, I was thinking that most of the tools are made in China anyways, the the top brand Milwaukee and there is skill that. saws and all that. So they all are coming from the same spot. And so at this point, buying Harbor Freight tools is putting the American advertising and designers and marketing guys out of work Yeah, because they are Americans working to perpetuate these local brands or American brands, yeah. whereas Harbor Freight isn't paying any yeah, native right. like advertising guys to make yeah. them look good so it's still harming americans but it's the more white collar advertising yeah. guys who are yeah. losing <laughs> out on it because the tools yeah. are coming from china i that's just where they're coming from right i mean I, I don't know where i would go to buy a pawn shop yeah besides a pawn shop i mean yeah. where do you go yeah and it it's a it's a thing it, it's a it's a stone in my heart, and I spend extra money sometimes to work around it. But sometimes you're stuck. Yeah. And I don't. I mean, maybe we'll find a way to reverse that. Maybe I hope. I hope the door hasn't shut on that opportunity forever. It's we'll tough. See. That guy who made that that new skill saw, the Cuz D saw. You oh, remember that? Yeah, the Cuz D saw. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I remember kind of. I went to his website at one point and was just kind of thinking, man, it's hard to make tools or man yeah. it must be hard to make tools yeah, it just hard. seemed hard yeah and so could yeah. it'd be tough to like yeah. spin it all up at this point it seems like yeah but there's some value there i mean yeah. to, to think about buying usa darn it there is some value there but it's just a matter of what you can do and continue to feed your family. I mean, that's what it boils down to. And we should just get more informed on this because I know there are some tools. There are some, let me change my tone. There are tools still made in the USA. And off the top of my head, those sawhorses right there are okay. made in the United there States, in California. In fact, there I saved go. the label. Um, yeah, Bur- Burrow brand. Burrow brand, yeah. Hold on, I got to make sure that I'm saying that, that that's correct. Yeah, maybe. yeah, they're made in the USA. Cool. And so... That's pretty neat. That's very That's, neat. And you can buy that set of sawhorses for less probably than it costs to build a set. By They're far. made in the USA. By far. And uh, China has not found a way to beat them. And ship on them pr- over And here. ship them over on price for sawhorses. So. Wow. Wow. So I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's another conversation that is, yeah. you know, it's thin ice. But doggone it, we have made a big mistake over the last decades somehow. But it always seemed reasonable at the moment. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, 300 million consumers deciding to save money by buying less expensive products or I mean, it makes who, sense, who made right? the choice, right? Right. Th- that's who made the choice. Yeah. That's who made the choice. And and when it gets right, so I bought a set of bolt cutters a few years ago, big ones. And the price difference between the one made in China and the one made in the United States was about 300%. Wow. And I bought the ones made in the USA because the previous ones I'd bought in China, the bit broke. It spalled off. The bit was too hard, hmm. you know, right off the bat. So I bought the ones made in the United States. I swallowed hard and I bought it and I have never been sorry because those things still work. Hmm. So anyway, that so that so that that responding to conscience was actually responding to uh an impulse to save money, which is not the same thing at all, is it? But yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we reverse this. But for instance, our pharmaceuticals, I wish were made here. You know, I just wish they were. Oh, like like medicine? Yeah, that's not. Where is that made? China. Uh, China. Huh. You know, I mean, there's a vulnerability there, right? Well, we we still make fighter jets, so if you <laughs> want to buy a fighter jet, you can buy one of those. Yeah, or but bombs. the components <laughs> come from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, any other. Any other uh, things to mention on building yeah. out a toolkit for the regular man? Yeah, uh, do as I say, not as I do, and have a nice toolbox to put them in. Keep them organized, keep them clean. Do not pay attention to the way Wadsworth lets his tools just sort of spread out and get collected back. Keep, yeah. them, keep them sharp if you have time, um, but work them. Yeah. Work and, them like dogs. You know what a fun tool, not a fun tool, but a nice tool to add to your collection as a homeowner is, is a bench vise. 
that is an easy one to be patient on. You can live without it probably. And therefore you can find one used for not a lot of money. Yeah. And it is such a pleasure when you have one of those for whatever the little, even if it's helping your kid, you know, fix a broken toy or something, mm-hmm. it's just another set of hands. Yeah. And that's a fun one to kind of add to a, uh, whatever workbench is in your shop. I remember I got one and it was, I remember being surprisingly, I don't know, pleased. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was really kind of good. It felt good. And I just had never, it had never occurred to me that that would be such a tools are pleasure. wonderful. Tools are wonderful. You can't have too many tools. Yeah. I will throw that down as an axiom to live by. You cannot have too many tools and whatever pain there is in buying a nice tool is soon forgotten. And the pleasure of using the tool is permanent. And uh, I just, we, we, we multiply our usefulness with our tools. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Thanks.